Hello, so it's Michael here, and today I thought I would do a video on using the Unreal Insights system uh, to do some debugging. So for those that might not be aware, Unreal Insights is a way of being able to kind of help locate and understand a little bit more about any performance-based issues that you might be experiencing within your project. So yeah, so I'm just going to go ahead and just jump into it. So. I am currently in Project Sunrise just because it's a project that has stuff happening uh, that I can show on, on YouTube without any problems. And I am currently using 5.4. As far as I'm aware, it should be similar in, in most versions. Uh, there might be slight changes here and there, but as far as I'm aware, Unreal Insights hasn't changed drastically enough as far as I'm aware. So first thing just to be, uh, well, I guess the first thing we need to know really is, is, is how we access this. Now, for me, the, the main way that I access Unreal Insights is actually through the bottom menu here. So when you're in sort of in the viewport, you have a section here that says Trace, which is obviously a little bit misleading because you think, oh, okay. Uh, but you click on that and you kind of get quite a few different options on here. So when we actually want to do some, some debugging for Unreal Insights, we essentially do a trace. Uh, and that kind of tells the, the editor that it needs to be essentially recording various statistics and function calls and things like that. Through this menu itself, we can quite easily just start a trace. And this is kind of telling, as I mentioned, the editor to, to, to do its thing and, and start recording some stuff. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go ahead and start one now. And you'll notice what happens, uh, it'll give you a little prompt here. And you'll see that there's a little red sort of option here. That just kind of indicates that it is running essentially. Now, the thing about doing a trace is it does work on the editor as well. So if you're actually having sort of performance issues in the editor, uh, you can use it for that also. Um, so once you've gone through, you can move around, you can start to play, that type of thing, just as you would do normally while the trace is running. And then when you're happy that you've collected enough data, you just stop the trace, just like so. Now, in terms of the trace itself, it does get stored to your hard drive. So you do need to make sure you've got plenty of space. I would imagine probably not much of an issue for most people. Um, but one thing just to be aware of is that tracers themselves, particularly if you're playing for quite long sessions, they can get quite large. So you can sort of jump to where it's stored, again, just by clicking the trace button at the bottom. And there's an option here that says open trace store directory. So we have just done a trace. So we should see that one trace listed in there. And you can see there that Obviously, for that short period of time, we're at 100 megabytes already. So it's just something to be aware of. Uh, obviously, you can come in here and delete the old ones if you don't need them. Now, in terms of actually viewing the trace, there's kind of a few ways that we can do that. Now, for me, um, again, a lot of cases I tend to do do it as I do the traces in terms of reviewing it. So it does appear under the recent traces. So you can go ahead and click on that, and it'll pop up this... Uh, window essentially and this is kind of unreal insights now there are a few other ways you can kind of access it um I don't remember where so there's the unreal insights session browser you can just click on that uh, and then there's normally somewhere yeah down here you can open trace um you can click on that as well so as far as where all the traces should appear in the list so you can choose whichever one you want and then just click open trace uh, although I do now have two open, so I'm just going to go ahead and close both of those. So that's kind of how we can do a trace um, and essentially how we can then open it to view it. Now, now we've actually got the Unreal Insights open, for a lot of people this is going to be like, what on earth is going off? But don't worry. Uh, obviously there's lots of things you can do in this, uh, but I'm just going to kind of run down on, on the basics just to get you up and running so you can do those traces when you need to and get a bit more of an understanding as to what's going off um, in terms of your performance within your game as of when you need to of course. So up at the top here is kind of like a, well essentially it's a histogram of the, the frame rate essentially. So ideally you want it as low as possible because that means a, a nice good frame rate. Additionally you kind of want it as stable as possible as well so you don't want massive fluctuations because that's going to cause uh, could, could potentially cause lag spikes, which again, you don't want. You don't want choppy frame rate. So looking at, at this here, you can see there's quite a few different sort of peaks and, and things, but looking here, it's quite stable. Same over here uh, with these little bits. Now, if you actually hover over them, you can see a bit more of a, 
insight as to what's going off in terms of like the frame rate. But one thing that you can do, which is, is kind of something you have to kind of remember, is you can zoom in and out. Now this is itself is actually quite important because looking at this, there isn't actually much information. But you can zoom all the way in and you can kind of essentially pick per frame. And you get to see the different sort of sections. So generally the, the the bit that took the longest tends to be the thing that's the highest on the list. So here you can see that there's one there for game the game frame, and there's another one here that's just for the render frame as well. So you kind of pick and choose between those. Uh, you can always rescale it as well if you want to. Now, if you actually click on a frame, like so, you'll notice the section underneath just goes absolutely crazy, and there's all these all different colours and rectangles with lines and bars, which again, can be a little bit confusing. But again, it's, it's nothing to be afraid of. All you need to do to actually start to make a bit more sense as to what's going off here is actually just zoom in. So again, we use the wheel mouse, we'll just zoom on in, and you'll notice that these segments are starting to separate a little bit. So just as a reminder, you can see the section that's kind of highlighted, and that's effectively the frame that I've clicked on on the top section. So that's just kind of one thing just to be aware of. So you can kind of pick a little a spike, for example, and then you just zoom right on in. And then what you should start to see is essentially a breakdown of the individual functions that were called in that given frame and how long it's taken for that function to complete. So on this particular frame here, we can see that the um, the engine loop tick took eight, 80 milliseconds, which generally is not great. <laughs> um, but you again get a bit more of a breakdown. So it looks like the bulk of that was just frame. I'm not sure specifically what it is, I assume some back end engine stuff. But then we start to get even further breakdown. So we get something called wind pump messages. Again, I'm not entirely sure what that is, but that's okay. Um, again, most of these are probably just engine related things, uh, but it kind of gives you a bit of a breakdown. Um, if you keep on going in, again, even in these smaller sections here, you can just keep on zooming in and you'll probably notice that they're getting more and more detail it kind of gives you an idea as to what's going on now i did play let me um see if we can find it so that's big spike here that looks like that's when i started to play in the editor so we can tell that just because we click on it and there's actually a function here that gets called called start play editor session you can see that's the bulk of this particular frame so from there I can see that chances are a lot of the frames after are probably going to be in engine at that particular point, well in game. So there is another spike here, um, this could be end play, uh, yeah so it looks like that is the end play. So I know based on this that the, between these two peaks is when I had did that little quick, quick play that I was only playing for like 5 seconds. Uh, but nonetheless we can then jump into one of these frames and we can get more of a breakdown as to what's going off in those frames. So some of these may make a little bit more sense. So for example, we have the one here to do with slate tick, so that's UI related things. And then we have another one here to do with world tick. So if we come in and actually go into the world tick, again, we just zoom on in. Again, you can zoom in so far. <laughs> um, and if, sometimes, you, unless you zoom in far enough, you, you might not necessarily see anything. Um, but again, if we, we've got this section here for the, the world tick, and we can kind of see, again, what, what things are actually taking up that world tick. So there's a section here called wait until tasks are completed. So this is essentially all the things that need to complete in that given tick for it to complete. So we have some things here for, let's have a look. So it looks like some to do with the character movement component, um, which makes sense. Let's have a few NPCs in here. Some things in here to do with the skeletal mesh and the animation blueprint, which again, we can zoom in even further. And what else have we got in here? Let's have a, get some more for the years. And then we have the third person character here, so we can kind of zoom in here. 
So the thing about the third person character, particularly in Project Sunrise, is I have a few functions in there to essentially update the arm length and the dynamic walk speed. And so there's quite a few custom functions in there. So we can actually see those in here as well. So because there is a function, it does show up in the list. So I know that the dynamic walk speed function takes 3.1 nanoseconds. I think that's nanoseconds, I'm not sure. So I'm sure somebody will correct me in the, in the comments. Um, similarly with the update arm length, we can see that takes 9.6 um, nanoseconds. But we can get further breakdowns of that. So uh, we can kind of see some of the other functions that might be in there that kind of make it up. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of um, how it works. Another example here is uh, the interact interaction system that I have on one of the characters. So we kind of get a bit more of a breakdown here again. So we have the main trace for interact function. And we can kind of see how long some of the individual functions are taking to call. Um, so this can be quite useful to, to kind of pinpoint where some of the problems are. Um, and what sections are actually taking the longest. So yeah, so that's kind of the main thing. Uh, obviously, just as a, an FYI, we were looking at the game thread there. So if you are doing predominantly blueprints, that's probably the main one you'd want to look at. In addition, there is also, uh, zoom out any further. Uh, in addition, there are additional threads and, and other things you can look at. You can scroll down. Uh, some of these are sort of essentially additional threads that Unreal might use to calculate some things. And in addition to that, there's also the GPU section as well. So if you think that your issues might be more GPU bound, then you can always look on here. Um, I wouldn't say I'm particularly averse in <laughs> the graphical side of things, but, but sometimes it can give you a bit of an idea as well, because I can see that a bulk of this time seems to be allocated towards shadow depths. I'm not sure if that's a good speed or not, but uh, but again, it can be a good way to kind of pinpoint and then obviously gives you a kind of a starting point to try and debug some of your, your issues. So yeah, so hopefully you found this video helpful. Um, so I know uh, it can be a little bit confusing to begin with. So that's a quick overview on using the Unreal Insights and how you can use that to debug your, your projects. So yeah. So I do just want to say thank you for everyone that does uh, that do watch my videos and thank you for all the, the support that you give me. Uh, I am on Blue Sky now, so if you do want to follow me on there, by all means jump on. Uh, I will leave my Blue Sky link in the video description, so check that out. Also, as a reminder, I do have a Discord, so if you want to have conversations or chats about things that you're working on and, and stuff like that, by all means jump on there. So yeah, so I just want to say again, thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of your day. Take care. Bye.